Well, welcome back to Financial Accounting, and I'm speaking to you from the lower right-hand corner of the slide, and I've discovered that my head is going to have to move around. I hope I don't make anyone seasick because um, the way this uh, Zoom is set up, my, my head always seems to be covering up something important. So the last objective, which was in your appendix, and sometimes we cover what's in the appendix and sometimes we don't, but in this chapter, uh, chapter six, uh, we do. So this is uh, this has to do with the estimating the inventory cost. And you think, well, why would a company ever have to estimate the value of its ending inventory? Well, it could be that uh, we do not maintain perpetual inventory records. Could be that we've got a, a, some type of disaster has occurred, either a fire or a flood, and we don't know, and maybe it destroyed the inventory records and, and we don't know, and the inventory was destroyed itself. We got to come up with a value of the inventory. Or it could be that we're doing um, monthly or quarterly financial statements and a physical inventory is only taken once a year. So when any of those situations present themselves, <clears throat> then we're put in a position where we need to estimate the cost of the inventory. And we can actually, there are two different methods to do this. There's something called the retail method. There's something called the gross profit method. And what it is based on, it's based on, we know that there is a relationship between the cost of the inventory and the sales price of the inventory. And under these two methods, once we know what that relationship is between the two, we can estimate the cost of the end inventory. We know from our previous discussions of inventory that the goods, the purchases, the, I'm sorry, the beginning inventory plus the purchases gives us goods available for sale. And then we have to make an allocation <clears throat> between the ending inventory, that which is in the balance sheet and the cost of goods sold, that which goes to the income statement. So there are circumstances where we have to estimate the value of the inventory and we'll go through two methods. The first method we'll go through is called the retail method of costing inventory, retail method. <clears throat> So what we do here is we estimate the inventory cost uh, based on the relationship between the retail price and the cost of the, of the merchandise. So we come up with a ratio that enables us to, to convert the cost of the, the, the carrying value of the inventory at retail to the carrying value at cost. So we determine the total merchandise available for sale at both cost and retail. So total merchandise available for sale, that would be the beginning inventory plus the purchases. So we know what we paid for that, and we know what we plan to sell that. We know its retail value. And then we look at the ratio between the cost and the retail uh, in terms of the goods available for sale. Then we determine the ending inventory at retail by deducting sales from the merchandise available for sale. And then we estimate the ending inventory cost by multiplying the ending inventory at retail by that cost ratio. So there's four simple steps here. So here's how it works. <clears throat> Goods available for sale, we know is beginning inventory plus purchases. So here's the goods available for sale at cost. Here's the goods available for sale at retail. We set up the ratio of cost to retail price. So 62,000 divided by 100,000 <clears> tells us that the cost of the item is 62% of its retail price. So if you take the goods available for sale and you subtract out the sales at retail, so this is goods available at retail, this is the sales at retail. That would give you the estimated ending value of the inventory at retail. But we know the inventory is not supposed to be at retail. The inventory is supposed to be at cost. So we simply take the inventory at retail and multiply by the ratio of the cost of the inventory uh, to its retail price. And we know from our calculation above, based on the merchandise available for sale, that, re that ratio is 62%. So if this is the ending inventory at retail, Remember, beginning inventory at retail, purchases at retail, <clears throat> goods available for retail. We subtract out the sales at retail. That gives us the ending inventory at retail. And to convert that to the cost, at the cost of the ending inventory, multiply the value at retail by this ratio of cost to retail. So my estimate of the inventory in this case is 18,600. That's called the retail method. There's also the gross profit method, which uses the estimated gross profit for the period to estimate the uh, ending inventory at the end of the period. And the gross profit, we would use the uh, gross profit percentage from the previous year, adjusted for any changes that may have occurred in either cost or sales prices. So we determine the merchandise available for sale at cost. We determine the estimated gross profit by multiplying the gross profit percentage soon to be 30% in this illustration. 
Then we determine the cost of goods sold by deducting the estimated gross profit from sales. And then we estimate the ending inventory by deducting the estimated cost of goods sold from merchandise available for sale. So this one has four steps. Determine the merchandise available for sale at cost. Determine the estimated gross profit uh, by multiplying the sales by the gross profit percentage. So that's the gross profit actually included in sales. Determine the, est the estimated cost of goods sold by deducting the estimated gross profit from sales. And then the estimated ending inventory at cost is simply determined by de deducting the estimated cost of goods sold from the merchandise available for sale. So this one's a little bit different than the retail method. It's easy to get them confused, but they're calculated in a different way. <clears throat> so this is estimating inventory by the gross profit method. So there's my inventory at cost. There's my purchases at cost. That's my merchandise available at cost. And I know the sales for the period were given at 250,000. And I know the estimated gross profit percentage is 30%. So every time we make a sale, <clears throat> Um, we are including a, or we're incurring a 25% markup. So a 30% markup rather. So if you can subtract out of sales, the estimated gross profit, that would give you the estimated cost of goods sold. So the gross profit percentage was estimated to be 30%. So if that's the sales price of the stuff that was sold to 250,000, that includes a 30% markup. So subtract out the 30% markup. And that's your cost of goods sold. <clears throat> so therefore, your ending inventory is the uh, goods available for sale minus your estimate of the cost of goods sold. That'll give you your estimated ending inventory. Now, notice the key calculation here in all these inventory uh, calculations with regard to the, the periodic method is once we know what the um, merchandise available for sale is, we're going to make an allocation between that, which goes on the income statement, which is cost of goods sold, and that which goes on the balance sheet. So if you have to estimate the ending inventory, one of the other method to do it is the gross profit method. Okay, so that concludes our study of uh, chapter six. So at this point, you should be able to describe the importance of control over inventory. You should just be able to describe the three cost flow assumptions and how they impact the income statement and the balance sheet. Determine the cost of inventory in the perpetual system under FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. Uh, determine under the different cost flow assumptions on the periodic method as well, be able to contrast the three inventory costing methods, illustrate the reporting of inventory on the financial statements. That's where the lower cost of market rule comes in. Illustrate, to describe and illustrate inventory turnover and days, sales and receivable are used to analyze the efficiency and effectiveness of management, inventory management, and describe and illustrate the estimation of inventory using the retail and gross profit methods of accounting. All right, so I hope you found that uh, little review of the two ways to estimate the ending inventory helpful. And uh, we will see, have a good weekend and we will see you next Tuesday and we'll move into uh, chapter seven. Uh, good luck on the chapter six homework. Until next time, adios, au revoir, hasta luego.